why 80s horror is the best hello and welcome to this week's video this week i want to talk to you about 80s horror and why it's the best horror baby now i admit i'm biased i grew up in the 80s and just as 80s comedy shaped my sense of humor 80s horror shaped my appreciation for the horror genre and kind of crystallized the kind of horror that I like and I go for. And I'm very happy about that because horror was probably at its most prolific in the 80s. And in my opinion, it was at its best. Now, I, I, I like a lot of 70s horror these days, though I don't remember seeing very much of it in the 80s. I mean, I guess I would have seen Halloween and I guess I would have seen Alien at some point in the 80s. But that's about it. I don't remember s seeing very much in the way of 70s horror as a kid. I certainly didn't watch like the Hammer stuff from the, from the 60s or even the 70s. The most of the, uh, of the horror movies I saw was 80s horror. Now I talked before about the two horror movies that, 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 that did actually scare the shit out of me as a kid. Which were the original Fright Night and A Nightmare on Elm Street. But the thing is that that's kind of why that was so unusual because yeah i i saw those movies at like 10 years old i guess and um which is <laughs> too young but but the point is it was a surprise that those movies had that effect on me because i was already watching horror movies dude uh I, I, and most of it was like water up a duck's back because i loved horror movies i i'm I was watching stuff like I mean I mean Poltergeist was probably one of my earliest experiences in, in, into the genre and again these movies they, those movies never traumatized me or scared me in that sense I just found them fun and thrilling and and entertaining and, and enjoyable Return of the Living Dead is another classic I absolutely love Return of the Living Dead to this day I absolutely saw it as a kid and loved it it never scared me Again, I just found them thrilling and, and, and spooky and, and silly and entertaining and fun. I never believed zombies were actually going to come and get me. <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoyed them. I mean, horror was just... I don't know how it is now for kids. But horror was just something you talked about anyway. I remember, having, I remember once in like junior school having a full-on debate with uh, at least two of my friends. About... Which monster would you rather face, like vampires or zombies or werewolves? We all kind of came to the conclusion, vampires, because there seem to be like an innumerable ways, uh, uh, amount of ways to kill them or, or, or at least repel them. The one, the one thing that had us stumped was zombies. I guess none of us had seen like Dawn of the Dead at that point. I didn't see Dawn of the Dead until like the late 80s, when I was in my early teens. Uh... Oh, we couldn't think of a way that you could actually kill zombies. So we were like, yeah, we don't, we, we, we really don't want to meet zombies. <laughs> but it was like, that, 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 that's the kind of stuff you talk about as a kid. Or at least it was then. I don't know what it's like now. Probably all talking about their pronouns now or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just, it was just something you did. I mean, I remember, again, I remember I was like six or, or something writing writing horror stories about dracula and 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 doing little, little, awful little uh, drawings of dracula with his with fangs and soaked in blood and, <laughs> and they used to, they used to get me to read these stories out to the rest of the kids as well nowadays they'd probably be calling in the child psychologist oh dear happy days i'm glad I, i'm glad i was a kid then and not now i'll say that but yeah, I grew up on, on 80s horrors. American Werewolf, uh, that was another one, another absolute classic that's still a timeless classic to this day. Night of the Comet. Uh, the Halloween, the Halloweens at least uh, two and three. I think I saw them later, a bit later on again. But horror was a pre uh, just a presence in, in, your, in my life. It was something you did. And it wasn't anything... It wasn't anything. I don't know. I don't think I, I was in any way aware of like the video nasties craze, that, you know, the the politicians hysteria that was going on in the UK. I don't think I was aware of that. I was too young to be aware of that. Horror was just something everybody did. 
there wasn't anything unusual about it or anything like that. I, I, I mean, I, and I mean, my folks didn't give a fuck. The only thing my folks wouldn't let me wash was sex scenes. I, I, I actually got like a American Werewolf on a, a pirate VHS, and, uh, and and my brother just cut out the the, the sex scene. <laughs> just edited out the sex scene. The rest of it, heads being bitten off. Eh. <laughs> Whatever, nobody cares. <laughs> Just sex scenes now. Same, same with Terminator. I, th I think I, ha I think I had an edited copy of the Terminator. J just, j just cut out the sex scene. Everything else, fine. Terminator slamming his head, slamming his hand through other people's chests and pulling their hearts out, fine. <laughs> um, is, is the Terminator a horror movie? There's a very good case for the, the for the for the original Terminator being a horror movie because it is a slasher movie. It's basically a slasher movie. The Terminator is Michael Myers. There's just a science fiction rationale for why you, you, you can't kill the bastard, that's all. But the thing is, 80s horror, it's, it's, it's like the gift that keeps on giving, because I just keep finding new ones. Particularly, I mean, I found some new ones in the 90s when I was renting VHSs. I, I mean, I talked a, a, a few weeks ago about finding Halloween 4 and 5 in the video shop, and I didn't even know there was a Halloween 4 and 5. <laughs> um... But I'm talking like nowish. I'm talking like the last ten years. Because certainly, ever since they got like a Blu-ray player, there's been so many more movies, '80s horror movies, obscure '80s horror movies that have come out that have been remastered, that are being rediscovered, and I'm right there rediscovering them because '80s horror is my horror. Now, now, not not all of them are perfect. Occasionally, you get something crap. But nine times out of ten, even though it's a kind of a vaguely mediocre one, it's still probably more entertaining than most of what comes out these days. I know, I know, we're supposed to be in a... I've heard so many people say, we're in a golden age of horror. It's like, really? Because most of it's just kind of boring, in my opinion. I'm, I'm not... I, the, the, what is it? The high-end horror? Elevated horror? Yeah, most of it's boring as fuck. Give, give, give me an 80s B-movie with lots of practical effects any day of the week, dude. That's my kind of horror. So again, stuff. Uh, I mean, a few years ago, I, I went through a big thing of sweeping up a lot of uh, like slasher movies that I had never seen before. In many cases, never heard of. Uh, just before dawn, Madman was a. I think I'd heard of Dubs before dawn. I'd never heard of Madman, which was, I thought, really, really good, really, really atmospheric, great stuff. Uh, the Zero Boys was another one, which is kind of a slasher movie with a with a bit of an action movie twist. The Budgeons or the Buggins, I've heard it called the Buggins. I've always, I've always called it the Budgeons. I can't, uh, uh, absolutely. That was a monster movie. Now, to be fair, in that in that case, there is no wonder that I didn't see it in the in the eighties or I've never heard of it because it, it had massive distribution problems and it didn't even it ended up not even coming out on VHS until like the late nineties. So it's <laughs> there's no wonder I didn't see it as a kid in the eighties. And it didn't come out on, on like DVD, on like DVD till like the twenty tens. I think it's got it's it's been rediscovered the last uh, ten years though, especially the last few years. It's got a four K recently, so clearly, clearly it's got a fan base now that it didn't for a long time. That was a really good, really enjoyable mon eight, eighties early eighties monster movie. Great snowy winter atmosphere as well, which I always like. Oh, talking of snowy winter atmospheres. Freaking the thing, dude. That's one of the greatest horror movies ever made. Again, eighties. Again, saw that in the eighties. I think it might have been a little bit later. I can't quite remember. Dude, I'm getting old. I'm trying to cling on to my memories because the eighties were the greatest time to be alive in living history. And now, let's face it, now sucks. But it is getting further and further away. Um, Talking of slasher, mo slasher movies, I, I, I watched one the other week on, on Shudder called Graduation Day. I may have seen that before in that, the early 90s when I was renting things. I'd say that was one of the more mediocre ones. It wasn't particularly great. And yet there was still something watchable and, and, and charming about it, which again, I would rather watch that than any flashy fucking full of itself modern stuff I'm sorry I, I just would another one I, I, I just kind of fell in love with recently in the last couple of years was Chopping Mall 
Now this is a now there, there was what I, I, Kelly Maroney. I always liked Kelly Maroney from Night of the Comet. That's another of my favorite eighties eighties horror movies, eighties comedy horror movies. That's another thing about eighties horror. Had a sense of humor. Very rare you get anything with a sense of humor nowadays because the uh, comedy is being banned in the West by order of the communist woke period party. Uh, but yeah, there was so many so much tongue in cheek comedy horror in the eighties. And again, that's my horror. I like that horror. I don't like that serious. I mean, there are some serious ones I like, but I like humor. I like fun. Not, oh, we're so intelligent and cultured. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Just show me a monster that's eating people, for Christ's sake. Uh, but I found, again, I found a couple of others. Kelly Maroney, I'd only ever seen in Night of the Comet for, for decades. And in like the last few years, I'm like, oh, she did other stuff as well. Zero Boys, which I mentioned, that was one. That was a really great one. And the, and the other big one that she's done was Chopping Mall. Now, I have to be honest, I think I, I saw Chopping Mall about five or six years ago on YouTube. It was a really poor copy, and I did not like it. I just, uh, I don't know, I get, maybe it was the poor copy. Maybe I just wasn't in the mood. I just found it really dumb and boring and just couldn't get into it. And over the following few years, I began to hear more about that movie because I'd never heard of it before. You know, it's it's the it's it's the one with the teens who who, who stay overnight in a in a shut down shop uh, shopping mall, and they've just introduced these new robot security guards, <laughs> and they start killing people, of course, in gory ways. Uh, and I found myself hearing more and more things, people saying that they absolutely love shopping mall, and I was like, really, really. And then it, it came on Shudder. Uh, I think it was it must have been last year. I only got Shudder middle middle of last year, um, and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I'm kind of curious. Maybe I misjudged this movie. And I watched it again and on a beautiful a beautiful remastered HD copy. And I actually had a great time with it. I immediately went out and ordered the freaking Blu-ray because it was just such great fun. Don't know what happened the first time. Maybe it was just. The crap copy, or I just wasn't in the mood, but I absolutely adored Chopping Mall. Another one that I that I discovered last Christmas, which is still on Shudder, I think, at least it is in Australia, and it's another 80s one. I don't want to talk too much about it, because I may actually do a separate video on it this Christmas, was Deadly Games, a.k.a. I think it's Dial Code Santa Claus or something like that, which is a 1989 French horror flick about this this kid who lives in the, this, this big mansion with his his rich mom and his ailing blind grandfather and he, he's obsessed with tech and he's obsessed with 80s action movies smart lad uh and then one one christmas eve while his mom is is, is out working the house is invaded by this psycho who's dressed as santa claus and he finds himself in a in a fight for his life and and for his grandfather's life that movie again it was very very it wasn't available in the west for a really long time and it became like this underground thing that people whispered about again the last five ten years that's been on that's been discovered remastered released on blu-ray etc and it was on shudder and i'd heard of it so i thought you know what i'll give this a try not necessarily expecting that much absolutely loved it fucking classic Superb atmosphere, like superb creep, spooky atmosphere, superb 80s atmosphere, superb Christmas atmosphere. Absolutely loved that freaking movie. Again, immediately went out and ordered the Blu ray. And there's still so many. There's still, I'm, I'm watching like horror YouTubers, I'm taking recommendations and trying to let them down. The only, the only thing that bothers you is that, hey, you can't get them. Half the time they're not on any streaming service, and the Blu-rays are like fucking ridiculous now. It's like fifty dollars a time for a single fucking ninety-minute movie, and you're like, really? That's a lot for a movie, especially for a blind buy. Granted, I'm I'm more comfortable blind buying an '80s movie than I am something modern, just because there's a better chance I'm gonna like it. But it's not it's it's not it's not one hundred percent. Occasionally, you get a fucking berserker or something that you're like. Well, that was shit. <laughs> but it, it is amazing. For someone who grew up in the 80s, who loves 80s horror, who's always loved 80s horror, who's 
Again, been on a, like a binge for the last 10 years of discovering new ones, often via Blu-ray releases. There's still so freaking many that I've never even heard of that I'm writing down on my list. I'm like, I'm going to have to get this, going to have to get this, going to have to see if it comes on Shudder or some other thing. I freaking love 80s horror. 80s horror is where it's at. Now, look, I'm not completely against modern stuff. There hasn't been anything this year so far, frankly. Uh, I'll tell you about the two I have seen later on. <laughs> um, I did enjoy a couple last year that were new. I, I, I enjoyed Scream 6, which was a surprise because I thought Scream 5 was god-awful. Uh, I enjoyed Thanksgiving. I really enjoyed Thanksgiving. And I really enjoyed it. It's a Wonderful Knife, which I also immediately went out and got a physical copy of, which I saw on Shudder. But they're very thin on the ground. They are very thin on the ground for me these days. And even the ones that come highly recommended, I just find myself going, yeah, okay, whatever. Whereas again, nine times out of 10, it can be the most obscure fucking shit you've seen. I've never heard of it. But if it's an 80s horror, probably going to be at least fun and entertaining, if not an absolute hidden masterpiece like freaking Deadly Games. I love rewatching the old ones, the ones that I saw as a kid that are still classics that still hold up. And I love being able to, I love finding all this, this new stuff that I've never seen before that, you, that in some ways you're like, I wish I'd seen this as a kid, but in other ways it's like kind of glad I didn't because at least I'm still rediscovering this stuff that I've never seen before and falling in love with things, which doesn't tend to happen a lot with modern media. So thank God for 80s movies and thank God for 80s horror. And that, my friends, is why I love 80s horror and why 80s horror is the best horror.